Lord, brothers and sisters, greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I count it a joy and an honor to be able to speak into your lives, to help navigate, to help us to navigate through these trying times. I want to look at the subject a little bit, Kingdom Leadership. Proverbs 2 scriptures, you're going to look up Proverbs 4, 23, 22, and 29. The scripture says, guard your heart for out of it flows the issues of life. I want you to know that in leadership, we must guard our hearts. In leadership principles, you're going to see that it is important for us to have a kingdom leadership. We thank God for the sacred word that out of the abundance of our heart, the mouth speaketh. So we Pray God in the mighty name of Jesus. You even said in your word that, that have you seen someone's skill in their labor? They will stand before uh, kings and not low officials, but they will stand before kings. Proverbs 22, 29. We thank God for this uh, sacred moment that we can learn from the sacred book about leadership because it is mandatory that we seek the guidance of the power of the Holy Spirit to help us to live in these trying times. So leaders must live. Um, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this moment. We pray, God, that these nuggets will be able to empower us, uh, help us to be equipped in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for enlightenment in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for kingdom leadership. We pray for kingdom men and women, God, who will be listening to this uh, video, that God, they would discover their leadership instincts that God uh, would build new things in their lives. We thank you God that the universe uh, you have created, the stars and the moon, uh, such uh, power you have God, such vastness you have, such variety that God they are still discovering galaxies and, and their planets out there Father. You are amazing God and we look to you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you Father for leadership principles. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. The first principle you're going to learn is problems emerge from a lack of leadership. Problems emerge from a lack of leadership. If there's no leadership, there's going to be problems in the family, in business, in the church, in government. Satan loves chaos. I want you to hear that. Satan loves chaos. He loves disorder. When there is disorder, Satan uh, relishes these moments because he loves this order. God brings about order, vision and structure, V-O-S, vision, order and structure. So we see that problems emerge from a lack of leadership. There must be leadership in the family, in the business, in the church, in government. Leadership is both physical and spiritual. We need a Moses lifting up his arms. Moses stood as a conduit for heaven to invade the earth. While Moses is praying, Joshua is battling for the nation. I want you to see that Moses is, Moses is praying and Joshua is battling for the nation and for the people of God. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, we uh, come upon a young leader. His name is David. And David came that day to deliver uh, bread and cheese for his brothers and he, I, I like to say this, he ended up in a fight. David faced Goliath. David came and saved his nation. Why? David developed his leadership instincts. Why was David um, facing Goliath at this time? Because Saul, King Saul, the king, the one with the title, was afraid to fight the giant. So you can have a title but not have courage. I want you to hear me well. That Saul was the only one. He and his son Jonathan had sword, shield, and spear. They were the only one in the physical dimension to face this giant in a physical level. But understand, leadership is both physical and spiritual. I want you to hear me well. Leadership is both physical and spiritual. And what we are discovering here now is that our leadership instincts must now move from not just physical to spiritual, but more so spiritual to physical. So I'm going to face the giants in the spirit realm, and then I'm going to go out there and face life. That's what I want you to do. So as you synchronize your life in prayer, you're going to discover that God is fighting for you. He's developing you 
to have leadership instincts that you go down on your knees as you sharpen up your leadership uh, capacity and skills you're going to have a kingdom leadership so david was able to face this giant because saul was lacking the courage and the faith in almighty god he uh, moved away from faith that's why he became afraid when he saw the giant so there must be leadership in our the home family responsibility we must be able to help nourish and nurture our brethren uh, then david became king over israel that one fight uh, they saw the champion in david leaders must lead if leaders are not leading then the enemy comes in and he causes mayhem and chaos and disorder if you are not leading you are in trouble if you are not leading you are in trouble you must help lead your house you must help lead your nation you must help lead your family how can i help lead, lead, lead my nation you go down in prayer you lift up the government you lift up the opposition you lift up uh, the prime minister you lift up leadership so we can live, live a and lead a quiet and peaceable life when you pray for the authorities we are going to live a peaceable and quiet life so you want to have kingdom leadership samuel obeyed god's voice and he went and anointed david the king so david was anointed king but david was not on the throne david was anointed king but david did not reach the throne until king saul was removed are you there with me so david was anointed in the midst of his brethren leaders must worship god leaders must become worshipers david uh, was a worshiper david stood and worshiped god david was also a worker david was a warrior and david was a winner that's the remedy for kingdom leadership you worship you work at it you sharpen up your skills david it was said that david uh, mastered the slingshot his, his skill his skill he was skilled using that slingshot he did not go fighting with saul's armory because david did not prove them or test them you want to fight how god equipped you to fight you i cannot fight like nobody else i must fight how god anointed me to fight so you want to discover your cutting edge you want to discover your skill set what are you good at doing and that that is a clue and that's an indicator what god is going to use to help you slay the giants in your life and help others to slay their giants so let them see you worship god david brought back the ark when david took the throne and the kingdom david brought back the ark of the covenant which was the presence and the power of almighty god he brought it in the capital city the center of the city and i want you to know it's symbolic that we have the presence and the heart of god and the center of our lives let all the people see the presence and feel that presence of almighty god in your life david moved from killing giants to empowering others to face their giants and to help kill their giants so david did not remain a giant slayer david empowered others to face giants and develop their own success we can't be always fighting giants all our lives we must learn to empower others equip them and cause them to be enlightened to, and be empowered to face their giants help us fight the giants so david did not put on saul's armor he was mastering his slingshot what are you mastering develop a skill if you love to sing if you love to worship if you love to share the word of god begin studying the word of god if you love leadership read leadership books if you love to serve serve whatever god has gifted you to do you do it to the best of your ability and what god has wired you to do i want you to know that god is opening up leaders leadership is going to cause the leader to arise in you in the name of jesus and as i want you to use the bible as your guide the bible says guard your heart for out of it flows the issues of you know how many leaders are out there and we must lead with strength with passion with purpose we must continue to lead some leaders even lead while bleeding jesus was going to calvary's cross and he was bleeding i want you to see that as we uh, even in leadership jesus showed his his uh, his strength and his power that he says whoever hear these sayings of mine will i will liken you unto a man who builds his house on a firm foundation 
So whatever you hear, you begin to put it into practice. So Jesus not only taught leadership, but he modeled leadership. Jesus took his cross and was heading up to Mount uh, to Calvary. Was heading up there. Why? Because he's showing and demonstrating leadership qualities. He's bleeding, but he's leading. Later on, you see they crowned him with a crown of thorns. But in the book of Revelation, the Bible says they crowned him King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I want you to see kingdom leadership. We serve a mighty God that he'll bring out the leader in you. There's a leader in you. There's a sleeping giant. There's a giant slayer inside of you. And I'm praying for kingdom men and women to arise in the name of Jesus Christ. Lead. Lead your house. Lead your community. Lead, help lead in the church as we take the church forward, as we take the church into kingdom purpose and kingdom destiny. Brothers and sisters, may God strengthen you and provide for your leadership qualities and, and sharpen up yourself skill sets to be developed in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank God that we will not always be fighting giants, but we will empower others to fight their giants. Thank you for this leadership uh, training, Lord. Help us to be empowered, energized, and empowered to face this world in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you, saints of God. God bless you.